what's up everybody it's your girl Sherelle unique here um, I'm gonna do a review I'm very late um, for this review but this is Tamar Braxton get your life um, season 1 episode 5 review I'm also gonna do episode 6 right after this um, which is actually the season finale so excuse my tardiness I actually had a major major um, death in my family um, my very 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 best friend in the whole wide world passed away um, my great grandmother and so um, I took some time off before doing this review so I actually watched this episode a few times but I wanted to come on and do this review before I did the season, season finale which actually aired tonight on WeTV um, so yeah, this is season, this is Tamar Braxton, Get Your Life, Season 1, Episode 4, Review. So let me start with the positives, because Lord knows it's a heck of a lot of negatives to talk about. Um, Tamar looked fabulous at David's party. Um, loved the hair, loved the outfit. The party looked really nice. It was really cool. She had ice sculptures. She had a live band. She had balloons. She had a whole casino type theme. And she flew his family in town for his 50th birthday party. He, I believe he had one birthday party in his life. He was turning, uh, seven. And she just threw this, ex uh, extravagant event for him. And so I thought that was pretty, um, pretty dope, you know? That she was able to pull that off for him um, so that's my positive all right let's get into the rest of this show so she starts off she's prepping the party you know she's complaining yelling at everybody because there's no balloons up you know um, they're getting the ice sculpture situation together they're putting everything together for the party um, prior to the party David is talking to his sister and um, he's checking on them because you know this is their first time on tv this is their uh first time i believe for some of them flying into america um for this party so he's checking in with them um so he's talking to his sister about his doubts about um tamar's dream work and some of his concerns with tamar's family so him and the sister discuss um uh, her family. So right now there's obviously a lot of beef between Tamar and her sisters. Um, this is an ongoing theme with the Braxton family. They made a whole reality show out of it. Uh, but David's family is very conservative. So David is, um, and his sister, um, they're worried about how that would work when they got married. From what David explained prior to this episode and from what the sister explains on this episode um you know when an, it's cultural for a nigerian family to marry the whole family when they get married they marry the whole family they're not marrying just that one individual whereas in american culture it's not that um i guess it's not that much a cultural standard where you can actually marry an individual and really not have much dealings at all with their family. So, um, that's why David and his sister are so concerned because they want to know how this dynamic will play out with Tamar having so much beef and beef and disconnecting her family and then them trying to come together as one big family. So they discuss that. Um, so they shoot over to Goalie. Goalie's discussing how Tamar has asked her to show up at David's 50th birthday party. And Goalie's saying that she she should have never went. And that's my sentiments exactly. Why did you go? David does not like you. He does not support the dream work um, that you do. Y'all don't get along. You don't like him. Why did you show up at this party? And I mean, I get it. You want to support Tamar and all. You want to show her that you love her. But there are boundaries. Majority of the problems that go on in this episode or in this entire season has something to do with boundary issues. Goalie should have never showed up at his party. Period. She should not have. Tamar should have never invited her, her and she should have never showed up. Let's start there. Um, 
And in my opinion, Goalie is just entirely too emotional to be dealing with the Braxton family. I just don't think she's tough enough. I don't think she's strong enough. I just, I'm just not here for it. Um, while Goalie's at the party, she actually ends up falling. Um, she's had one too many. But she blames that on David. And <laughs> David was not even around for the fall. But somehow that's David's fault. Um, David was being a whole jerk to her. Um, he's embarrassing her at his party. You know, he's introducing her to um, very important people. And, and he's like, kind of like, oh, well, Goli, what do you do again? Like, causing her to try to explain what, what she does. Um, in a condescending kind of way, like he is really like coming for her and she doesn't know what to do about it. Um, which is why she shouldn't have been there to begin with. And she should have left. I mean, leave early. You don't have to stick around while you're being mistreated. I just don't understand the logic that goes on here. Um, so Tamar comes out in her fly dress Tamar has gained some weight, but I like I like the thick Tamar. I mean, she looks grown. She looks grown. She has a great body. She's slim, thick right now, and I'm loving it. Um, she comes out, and David puts his whole entire foot in his mouth, and he says that she looks like the older woman. But he's talking about the movie, um, I believe, Harlem Nights, and he's saying that she looks like Della Reese, and that's just a horrible thing to say. I mean, he's trying to throw a joke at her. Uh... But let me tell you men something. If your woman comes out, her hair, she just spent hours on hair, hours on makeup, hours on getting a dress and stuff together. Don't tell her nothing other than you look nice, babe. No jokes, okay? Don't do it. Leave it to yourself, okay? It's a terrible time for all of that. So, um, yeah, that was whack. And I could tell that hurt Tamar's feeling, and she kind of used that as a joke to laugh it off you know what I'm saying um so then we shoot over to David sitting and talking with his brother-in-law and he is talking to his brother-in-law who actually is a pastor about the dream work that Goli does and um the pastor saying you know this is definitely witchcraft um there's no way that this work that she's doing cannot not be spiritual um, and he told David to not be afraid to confront the situation. And um, although I don't fully agree that it is witchcraft what Goalie specifically is doing, I do think it walks a fine line. And, and so I understand why this pastor feels like it was uh, demonic or witchcraft. I understand why David questions if, if it is. Um, you know, it's along the lines of mediums, and the Bible does talk about mediums. Um, so it's, it's running very close to that same um, kind of work, which is frowned upon in the Bible. So I do understand the logic of uh, why they are questioning what's going on. And um, however, I understand that what Goalie's work is and how that differs from that. But the problem was. It was never fully explained to David what was going on. And Goalie got so wrapped up in her emotions that she couldn't clearly explain what she does. And I just felt, I hated that she was so heavily bothered by what somebody else thinks of the work she's doing. It's like, girl, you had to have come up against somebody who didn't think this was real. And I hated that. She made that the producer's problem. She made that Tamar's problem. Everybody had to hug her constantly and console her. I just was not in for, for any of that. Um, I hated to see that no none of Tamar's family was at the party um, that she did for David. I thought that was kind of shady because Tamar does, from what I remember, tend to go to um, the birthday parties. She would be bullying while she was there, but she would go to the birthday parties of the family, um, the events that they had. And so I just would have liked to have seen her her family there. But it reminded me of how the Braxton women treat the, the men. Um, 
clearly they have a problem with Tamar and David. Um, but it seems as though the Braxton family don't like any of the men. Unless he's brand new and they don't know him yet. They treat the men around them pretty foul um, overall. And if you watch the seasons, I mean, I think even Iyanla mentions it. How, how the Braxton women treat the men in their lives. Um, so, yeah, I think that's definitely a thing. Um, so we go back, like I mentioned, David, he does this shady introduction. Um, uh, uh he introduces Goli to a renowned lawyer and then he puts her on blast. So what, Goli, what do you do again? Knowing he knows what she does, but he's trying to make her look like a fool and she falls right into it because they don't like each other. And Goli's like, these people are losers to me. And you know, <laughs> so like I said, she falls and she slips. And of course she says this because she feels unsafe by David. And it's from the evil look from David. Everything's from this evil place that David did and blah, blah, blah. Girl, you fell because you were drinking too much and you should have went home. <laughs> Please, I'm not here for that. As y'all can see, David got David definitely got some flaws for sure, in my opinion. Um, but I'm just not here for the David is evil narrative. I'm just not here for it. I feel like that's something that the producers, that's the narrative the producers have put together. And, um when really a lot of these producers are evil because if you watch this show was supposed to be the empowerment of Tamar and her journey and it went directly from that to all of the drama that is Goalie and David's situation and I just felt for Tamar in this situation because she really meant well and she wanted things to go well and so it's hurtful to watch uh so the producers pulled Tamar aside at the party. I don't know why they had to tell her this at the party, but they pull her to the side at the party and they say um, that Goli is feel, feels bad. And Tamar's just talking about how she just doesn't want anybody to feel bad. She couldn't understand why Goli would feel bad, which is like, girl, why'd you invite her to this party in the first place? There was no way she was not going to feel bad. <laughs> she was really took it personally, David's, thinking that what she was doing was witchcraft. I mean, I don't know. So, David comes looking for her because he hasn't seen her in a while and she's, she plays it off, the conversation. She, Baby, I'm hot. I'm hot. Oh, it's 81 degrees, babe. I, got, mm, I just came over here because I was hot. You know, because she doesn't want to jar him and make him upset at his party. Um... One thing about Tamar is Tamar is loyal to a fault. That's one thing I actually love about her. Her loyalty to the people that are very close to her. Um, but it's hurtful to watch because she sacrifices herself for those people in her life sometimes. Um, she would do that a lot with Vince. When Vince would be in the wrong about something, she would um, she would lie in front of the cameras and not be honest. But she, one thing about people who do that and who bottle, it comes out in other ways. Uh, so David's asking her. He comes to get her. He's like, you know, babe, we got to go and work the party. You know, um, we got to stick together. And some people saw this as a form of control on David. But one thing I can say is with the African men that I've dated and my African friends that I've had, you know, that is a important thing that you are a good host to the at the parties that you put together the events you put together you know that you stick around and then you know T tamar has this whole thing oh i'm tired now i'm 42 i'm laying down so she goes and lay down lays down uh so david starts to get frustrated so he's just like you know well let's just send him home let's send him send him home and he's frustrated um and that was something else about you know some of the African friends that I've had in my past, like I would know that the parties were a big deal and um, there wouldn't be a time where people would go home. 
<laughs> which is something we kind of kind of keep within our community here in the black community um the time in which a party starts and the time in which a party ends it's never really on time that kind of thing um something we develop from african culture and so tamar's like look it's after 12 babe we gotta go to bed <laughs> she's tired and he's wanting to continue to host and work the party um and david just feels like it's it's rude for them to be gone for 30 minutes and they're not entertaining the guests who have come so far so he he leaves he lets tamar lay down he he's like frustrated but he leaves tamar gets mad like oh how you just gonna leave me i just thought that whole thing was like just a dramatic hot mess personally um but you know whatever so she gets frustrated then she finds david and she they go in the bedroom there's people in her bedroom um, I don't know if it was producers or party goers or what was going on. However, these people should not have been in her bedroom. And it was very intrusive, um, these people being in her bedroom. So Tamar changes clothes and they come out of the bedroom. That's when they cut the cake and they give their thank yous and the party ends. And the party's quite successful. Um, we cut to Goalie and Goalie's like, oh my arm is bruised and it's from david's eyes um yeah but i'm not gonna give up with the work i'm trying to do with tamar and i'm just like girl your arm is bruised because you got drunk and you fell okay stop trying to blame everything on david now that you're mad that he questioned your work i just i'm not here for it y'all sorry i saw some of y'all's reviews but i am not here for that i'm just not um so Tamar finally gets a chance to meet with Goalie. She gets to do the dream work, which I feel like the dream work is really beneficial to Tamar because Tamar does not shut off. She does not take a moment for herself. She she never looks deep within. She keeps things very surface level. And whenever she is challenged to go deep, um, she resists in her own way. She becomes distracted, you know, or she just quits participating. Um goalie has her do some role playing with some of her um entourage i'll just say um and tamar honestly was just resistant to the work um she didn't want to talk about how she felt about trina she claimed she was numb and she didn't have anything to give just another way of combating and pushing away the work that goalie's trying to do and i understand goalie's frustration because it's like I can't you when, when I get you to pay attention you're not even working with me uh, you know it's it's I can see that it's grueling and it's hard to deal with um so yeah um Goli then says that David represents the masculine betrayal she has been through and I do think he does represent that in her dream that's why he keeps popping up in her dreams as somebody who is betraying her cheating on her or it's always some kind of situation where she feels insecure about something he's doing, whatever. So I do think in her dreams, he is a representation of that. Um, and I do think Goli knows what she's talking about when it comes to these dreams that Tamar's having. Um, I think Goli is good at her work. Um, I, I just have a problem with her being an emotional basket case throughout this show like i'm not here for it we're here for tamar's breakdowns not yours <laughs> um and so she tells tamar that she's been trained to not actually express herself i agree with that to some degree when she first said it i was like oh no tamar's always expressing herself but when i think of how loyal tamar is to like her sister tony or how loyal she is to she was to Vince, how loyal she is to David. Um, she will not allow others to treat those people poorly, and so in, as in an effort to protect them, she will hold back um, in times when they are wrong. So um, I do agree with that. I do agree that she has been trained in a sense to hold back from certain with certain individuals but what i do feel like is that it comes out in other ways with her lashing out her bullying her um having emotional breakdowns her shutting down 
when it's time to record her like it comes out in other ways and when you bottle up things for so long it becomes up it gets to a point where you can't bottle anymore and i think this is the part where ta where that is for tamar um so goalie hits a few nerves with tamar and she's really like having some revelations so tamar starts to shout you know and you know then she gets another distraction because her mom calls and wants to speak to logan right in the middle of the dream work and it's just another case of not being able to go deep enough with tamar something always stops it it has to be logan it has to be her mom it has to be vince popping up at the crib it gotta just david's calling you know it's always some kind of reason why she can't go any further than where she needs to go um yeah i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it um so Tamar's assistant mentions the story of Joseph in the uh, in the Bible, which I'm kind of confused as to why this wasn't mentioned sooner. Um, basically, for those who don't know, Joseph was a dreamer. God gave Joseph dreams. Um, he had dreams that um, he would have dreams that maybe like the stars and the moon would bow down to him. Um. Or certain things would bow down to him. And he would tell his brothers these th dreams. And his brothers, they attacked him. And long story short, they ended up having to bow down to him in the end. But he had dreams. God gave him visions and insight. And he also interpreted dreams so there are stories of some people having the gift of interpretation and some people having the gift of foresight um in the bible and so it was never mentioned to david so oh, i'm not sure if david knew this and was trying to trip goalie up with his questioning his probing questions um to see if she knew this or not but all in all david wanted to know what is the source of your dreams because that's the thing the source of David's dreams was from God. That was why the story was in the book. Um, that was the source of his dreams. That was the source of his interpretations. Um, and so David's like, okay, well, what is your source? Your source, God? Because if it is, I'm cool with this. If it's not, then I'm not so cool with this. And I feel like that's legitimate to feel that way. Does Like I said in my past reviews, does Tamar have to listen to this? No. She don't. Um, I feel like she should hear him out, but she should ultimately do what she chooses to do. Um, so David calls, which is yet another in, um, interruption. He's saying he wants to talk to Goli again. And, you know, this was prompted by his brother-in-law who's like, you know, don't be afraid to confront this with her. I wouldn't be afraid to con confront this. And so he arrives. He is very sure what he wants to do. And they go into the back room, Mikeless. It is David, Tamar, and Goatly. They take the mics off and they have it out in that back room. It's a lot of arguing. It's a lot of screaming. Uh, I hear Goatly cussing. Um, yeah. It's not a good situation. Um, in this situation, I think David's doing too much. Um... I try to put myself and be empathetic to it in his mind he has to protect his family because there's an evil force that is attacking his family and he has to protect it at all costs on the other hand um tamar should have put more boundaries on goalie maybe asked her to leave uh maybe did the work outside of the home or separate from what david she didn't even have to answer the phone when david called because she's doing her work with goalie and i just think that she should have placed the boundaries there because she has decided to work with goalie and um does does david need to know yeah they live together they're together for two years he does need to know what's going on and i don't think she gave him a clear enough explanation of what was going on prior to this show um tamar and then I don't think Goldie was able to explain it because she got emotionally wrapped up. 
um i don't think that but um either way when she found out he wasn't on board with it she should have protected goalie she should have just kept this okay goalie we gonna we gonna do this together because this is about my my work this is about my creativity and like tamar said this was a party that i invited to you two where there was no plus one and um she kept allowing there to be a plus one and i didn't like that and i hated that goalie could not hear that 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 was a boundary thing for tamar to tamar made that mistake um instead she wants to fo focus and target david uh well tamar's taking the blame for what david's done and blah 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 well T Tamar should have put boundaries. She's the one who's doing this work with you. So she can't let all these other people attack you. I don't know. That's just my thing. So they go in the back room. They're micless. Um, uh, Tamar's trying to tell David it's not negative work that she's doing. Um, Goalie's having it out. Goalie feels like, you know... I can't be telling other people to have a voice and then I'm not having one. So Goalie's like right there ready with it. Um, she mentions Tamar twerking, which I think was really out of line. But in the for the sake of the argument, she's like, well, Tamar is twerking. That's not in the Bible either. You know, what are you talking about? Um, Goalie's calling him MRFers, saying F you, F off, get out my face. Um... Uh, you're not going to treat me like you're some king. I'm royalty. Uh, so Goalie's had it up to here. And she's letting David know she's had it up to here. Um, I just I just think as a professional, I just wish she would not have allowed herself to uh, be taking out her hookup. Just off of somebody who is critiquing her work. Let your work speak for itself, girl. Let them look. I work with Lady Gaga. I work with this person. I'm working with Miss Tony Braxton. I know who I am. I know what I can do. This is my work. I have my credentials. If you like it, cool. If you don't, you don't. And I just wish she would have stood on that. I think that would have made her job shine brighter than to see her calling him Emma Effers in his own home. Um, I just think that that diminished the work that she's been trying to do um of course the producers and to me as they're trying to villainize david the the producers are the real villains if you ask me um of course they're gonna make it sound like david's fighting her um and then even the producer's gonna say well i i uh i don't think he hit her of course you're gonna say that to make sure that the audience wonders if he's hitting her and you know just going real if if he hit that woman things would have went way farther and y'all know if this as a black man hitting a white woman things would have went way further that this would have been a whole different show so you know i just don't like all of that type of um i don't i just don't like it uh and so Goli says, you know, he doesn't like me because I'm the truth. And I see behind his lie. And, you know, he doesn't want me to um, mess up his family. And I'm just like, get out my face with all of that. Uh, but she also notices that upon quitting, she notices that Tamar just isn't ready. Tamar isn't ready to do the work. And that's the God-given truth. Um, whether you like David or not, whether you like Goli or not, Tamar is not ready to do the work that she needs to do in order to get the full healing. I do think she came to some revelation um, working with Goli, um, but she's just not ready to do all of the work she needed to do with Goli, and it ended up being a lot of wasted time for Goli, unfortunately. But I do think that Tamar is closer to her breakthrough, um, despite what went on with Goli. And David but I do think they uh that whole argument was out of line goalie was out of line for cussing him out in his house David was doing the most Tamar was doing the least <laughs> and yeah that's my opinion on this uh Tamar Braxton get your life 
episode 5 review. Um, sorry for my tardiness once again. Um, rest in peace to my great Grammy. And y'all keep my family in your prayer. We need it very much. Um, I think that's it. Alright, I'm out. This one piece of hair does not want to cooperate with me. Anyway, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the comments, and let me know what you think. Alright, I holla.